right, so we're definitely getting into this game right here on Smashville. And the thing about Smashville is that it allows both these characters to have such good movement and control of the stage that we're definitely going to see what's going to happen here. Not too much is happening right now, but we are seeing a little bit of the Falco combos doing a lot of damage, 49%, and still controlling this neutral right here, but getting reversal, not doing too much damage, and here again is where we start these combos. I'm hoping to see that we... Oh, yo. All right, forward throw, putting him back off the stage. I'm loving the movement. You were saying how, oh, side magnet can be so tricky, but there's so many little parts to uh, Ness's movement at a baseline that can make him hard to pin down. And what a trade. That's kind of honestly neutral for both of them. <laughs> oh, wow. This is looking very scary right here. Ooh, and this is just making it so hard for Tilde to actually do anything. And wow. love that recovery. I love that recovery. But in the end, PK Crystal finds the actual finishing blow. Um, but I love that side B because he got to do it lower than normal. You saw that PK Crystal put out a hitbox at a very specific range. And because he was able to go underneath, he just wound up on the other side completely un uncontested. All right, but now... 137. Back throw, fun fact, back throw, very low base knockback. Forward throw has a ton of base knockback, very poor knockback boat growth, mm -hmm. but uh, Ness's back throw is the one that does, sends you like nowhere at zero and kills you at 80. Okay. I'm liking this, using the long lasting hitboxes that Ness has. Oh, but I love that, the drag down forward air. That's one of the tricky things about playing against Tilde Falco specifically. You never quite know what's actually going to spell your death. Like, is it a forward air? Is it a down tilt? He has so many options because of his ability to link certain moves into those sort of kill powers. Absolutely, and right now we're seeing this really even game. I think they were only a percent apart. Hello? That's actually really crazy, but... No jump off stage. I love that aggressive forward air, though. Absolutely. That is like, you know, it, when you are somebody who manages to take the opponent's jump, you want to push the advantage on that. But aware of that, PK Chris just uh, puts a forward air in the way. And now he's back with some stage control. He's down a little bit in terms of percent, but... Okay. Very nice. Roland getting that back here to take out that stock. And here's the thing, too, because I really love the way that Tilde is actually going about just being super safe especially when it comes to that option right there. And so just taking his time when it comes to actually getting these ledge traps going on, not going off stage too much, and just making it so much harder for PK Chris to get back onto stage. And right now, this is exactly where we're seeing that. Very nice recovery, being able to get back to stage very well, and then putting on some damage. But that back throw is going to be able to take out that stock, and we're still at a very, very even stock right now. Oh my god, and this ledge trap situation not gonna do too much on the end of PK Chris and wow, gonna go for this combo right here. Oh, that was uh, that could have been huge, but instead we have that combo being dropped at a pivotal moment. PK Chris though still ooh, now they're kinda scrapping it. And I feel like Falco's kind of just better at the scrap. His frame data is really solid and at the mid like at the close range, it's surprisingly his moves reach surprisingly far. Absolutely, and here's the thing is too, I definitely really love the way that, again, like, Tilde is just positioning himself just to be able to kind of get these combos, get out of the corner, and making sure that it's so much harder for PK Chris to get anything, and that was a very nice way, but not going to get too much off of that, and still waiting on the corner right here, waiting for PK Chris to do something, and keeping PK Chris at the corner. This is absolutely so scary, because PK Chris has to do something, and it's looking so hard for him right now, but still taking off that center stage, Trying to do something to reset this back to neutral. As long as he doesn't die, he's fine. Which sounds reductive, but at the same time, look at this. He's playing around, throwing out these big hitboxes. And back throw, is that actually going to kill? Yes. It, it does! Okay. I, literally what I was saying. At the end, he was not dying. He was surviving to all. What was that? 150%. And then that single opening at 80. When did he grab him? It was like around 80%. He's just dead. Yeah, 86. Mm -hmm. Tilde needs to be finding actual... He can't let that be happening is what it comes down to. He was getting so hungry with those landing aerials and it, are we going to look at Tilde's expression? I are we going see to it. get to... Let's see it. We don't get to see it. 91 is when it kills. That's when the throw was initiated. 90... Oh, he was grabbed okay. at 91. I see. Yeah. 
Wow, and we're going straight back to Smashville. I definitely am a little bit confused to this counter pick, but this is again a really good stage for Falco, so I'm not that surprised. I'm not that surprised also, especially because at least once in that last game we saw going under the stage kind of helps with the recovery. Uh, mm. It just means that the opponent ha can't just put out a hitbox around ledge range in order to deal with Falco Illusion. Absolutely, and that's the thing too that we've been seeing. Just about, um, you know, Tilde use that to be able to get back oh. to stage very well, and I definitely love this on Tilde's end, making it so much harder for PK Chris to actually um, edge guard him. So good, but we're seeing Tilde trying to put on so much damage because that's exactly what we need here, and this is looking really scary. Oh, this is so funny. He that. reflected the PK fire, which meant that because he was going for side Magnet, he absorbed it and healed a little bit. Uh, he was still negative in that exchange, but it's kind of funny that PK Chris actually healed off of the side Magnet by accident. Oh, oh, oh is that DA? Okay. Not the DA. Oh my good, the DA was scary. <laughs> Oh, wow, but again, we're getting back to this. I love this already. Really nice from Tilde, just kind of taking it slow, but trying to put on a little bit more damage. Not going to get too much off of it, for sure, but still trying to take it really slow, and I definitely love that fair to stuff out that um, forward air. I will say, when Tilde takes your stock first, it is so scary because now you are low percent against a Falco again. All he is looking for is any one of his 17 combo starters to do 80% to you. I mean, honestly, that's all it really takes. I definitely feel like we just need to see, you know, Tilde be a little bit more careful about how he's actually landing. Because again, we saw that for um, that last stock on the last game actually make it a little bit harder for Tilde, but we definitely don't want to see Tilde lose this stock. And, wow, very nice on his end, getting that stage pike and leading to PK Cars losing his second stock. Dan was the kind of stage spike where you would not expect to get knocked into the wall. Oh, that should be death, though. Yep. Good stuff from PK Chris, but this is still two stocks to one. This is so difficult, especially against t character of Pi, a player of Tilde's character. Also, can we just talk about this SDI? Because I definitely know it has to be SDI that's getting Tilde out of a lot of these moves. Look at that. You see that? I mean, I I'm sure. But like, what else? If you're getting down tilted by Ness, what else are you going to do? You might as well. You just play the Mario Party minigame of <laughs> Splat the Control Stick. <laughs> What a parry! Oh, that's reminiscent of how game one ended, where he was just like parrying these down airs or just shielding them properly. And I definitely want to mention again these fairs because these fairs are definitely stomping. They're stumping out a lot of the approaches that, you know, PK Chris has, and it's working out so well. But that nice side magnet back on the stage is going to end that stock with a back throw, and that was so good on PK Chris, still making this so even. Oh and we God. definitely don't already want to see a situation where Tilde can lose this game entirely. This now, is still so much scarier than it needs to be. It was scary. But, like, consider this was a three stock to one game at one point. It's so hard to make a three stock to one comeback. And although PK Chris has not done it yet by any means, he has made this dangerously close to the point where Tilde, you see, he's starting to play a little bit more scared, but he manages to get stage control. I like the idea of not trying to fight your way back and instead just navigate back to center stage. Oh, the down tilt. This is really big. He has no jump, but he... I love the angle on that. <laughs> the up B, and he's actually making it back to ledge. But who's going to find this next hit? Because the next hit that's dealt onto PK Chris might be the last one of the game. <gasps> oh my god, this is so scary for Tilde. <gasps> and no SD at the best time. I'm not, the thing that is, was the worst time for him, SD. An SD, but like, what was he going to do there otherwise? <laughs> You saw that, that 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 yo yo was just hanging out at the very ledge there. I guess he maybe could have gone for like a re really high up B. I think, but uh, even a then, little, I mean, see, because then the thing is too, because then again, how else can you like recover? He could have went for like a little bit of a higher recovery at that point, but still, it doesn't look like it was gonna help that much. And again, are we? What stage are we going back? To? Are we going back to Smashville? What's going on here? We're going to small battlefield. All right, but again, here's the thing. It's definitely still so scary and already putting on so much damage, 39%, and still trying to retaliate with some, you know, damage in time. But, wow, this is where we start seeing the Falco combos putting on 50%. Oh, my God. And still trying to get this Ledge Trap going on right here. What's going on here? Did you see that? You didn't see that. That was really crazy. Trying to end Tilde's life with that F Smash right here. Okay, oh, I like that ledge attack. Just being really patient and then recognizing when his opponent was going for a little bit too hungry of a uh, 
of a ledge trapping option. Oh. oh, well, that's why he went for it before. I don't think he's making it back yet. Yeah, not able to actually connect with the side of the stage means he, means he can't use his up B again to make it back to the ledge. This is looking much better for Tilda, and I think it's, you see a little bit of a different strategy here where he's like, let me really focus on ledge trapping instead. Keep Absolutely. you at the ledge, just rack up damage, and then when the time comes, I will kill you. Ooh, and this is exactly where again here, pointing out about that ledge trapping. We're seeing it coming in, just making it so hard for PK Chris to get back to center stage and still trying to put on so much more damage. And it's looking so much harder for PK Chris because Tilde is just making this so much harder than it needs to be. And I, again, I really love these spares against to stuff out a lot of these you no know, neutral options from the end of PK Chris. But that back throw is going to be able to seal out that stock and still only at 73%. And again, if we had known anything about PK Chris, we've known that PK Chris can do a lot of damage and just take stops yeah. really well. But that back air is going to do it. Now, nice. this is obviously not a great position for PK Chris. But last game, he won from an even wider deficit than this. Then again, I feel like Tilde may be learning from his mistakes. You know, you don't want to repeat the same sort of nightmare scenario over and over again of having like a big lead just evaporated. So he's playing a lot more carefully right now, but it's it's patience that doesn't sort of belie fear. You know, it's not like he's playing patient because he's scared. It's rather he's just taking his time because he knows that he can and should. Absolutely, and I definitely would love to see a little bit more situations where we can see Tilde just actually kind of like use the reflector just a little bit more neutral. I feel like that'll help him a little bit more instead of just committing to something like Fair. Because like mm. although Fair has been working for him so well, it just makes it so much harder for PK Chris to actually get anything in neutral with just how much Tilde can space out so much from him. Okay, here comes <laughs> Look at that, the jumps right over it. Doesn't actually get a punish of any kind, but we're seeing that PK Chris recognizing maybe those options that Tilda's opting to throw out when in the corner. Even if he doesn't make the comeback happen this game, that's even more information that can be used later down the line. The fact he's up 2-0 means he has a lot of room for error. Okay, the, up, the down tilt there, not actually killing, but it's coming very close. I don't know if he can take another one of those. Yeah, things are, this is, Oh, but we also saw in game one he survived to such high percents. But this time around, really good job there. Catching it with the neutral air. Going to be taking out the last stock for game one on the board. Absolutely. Definitely love that game. Very, very nice to be able to close that out. But I really feel like we need to see a little bit more, like, neutral controlling from, you know, Tilde. Because that just makes it so harder for, like, PK Chris again to do anything. Like, we, that was, again, a really nice snare to be able to seal that out. But again, looking for those down tilts made it stale a little bit more. And granted, like, he's been using it to, like, you know, ledge trap to kind of, like, edge guard a little bit to kind of make it so much harder. But yeah. we definitely need to see a little bit more of a different approach to the way that he goes about it. And also from narrative, games one and two, I believe, PK Chris made a comeback. You know, he was down by a lot and then made the comeback happen. In this game, but in game three, Tilde got that lead and preserved it. So now as we move into game four here, I wonder what sort of storyline we're going to be seeing. Whether Tilde is going to get a lead and then lose it, or whether maybe he's, he might not even have a lead to begin with if PK Chris can actually open him up properly at the start. Where are you going, buddy? What's, 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 what are you trying to tell us? <laughs> is there something wrong? <gasps> okay, we're good. Very nice grab right there, throwing till they right back off stage, and still they're going for a little something. Okay, doing 58% and still trying to keep PK Chris right back on stage. Yeah, very even right now. This is maybe the most even we've seen this to a start of uh, so far in this set. Oh, that PK fire just barely missing. If that had connected, that might have been just till there's death right there. But great spacing on his part. I love that forward tilt, just running in and going for it. For some characters, like running in and forward tilting is basically like a safer version of dash attack. But right there, actually finding the kill and what this happened? Is, uh, I believe it was down air to back air. But that was. But what was that? Why did it said like that? <laughs> uh, probably because. Well, so here's one of the things that when you get hit by Falco, by that combo starter, you're like, I want to di away because I don't want to get hit by the follow up, and then sometimes you're holding away when you get hit by the follow up. Oh no. 
but that follow-up is definitely following up, especially with that up smash taking out that Zok and still making this a very even game. PK Chris is having none of this. He says, I want this to be a very clean 3-1 game. It could have been a 3-0, but no. It's going to be a 3-1, and it has to end like this. But I don't know what's going on here. Tilde is having I'm none of it. I'm loving this neutral right now. Look at the way that they're dancing around each other, respecting options and spacing beautifully. Oh, but great job staying in shield, finding that opening. And now we once again have Ness off the stage. For the most part, though, PK Chris has been recovering relatively for free. I think PK Tilde knows that Ness is harder to edge guard than you would expect. Good parries, though. We're starting to see PK Chris get quite a lot of parries on those landing aerials. So maybe starting to understand and predict the timings that Tilde is going for. And he just lets it rip. Batter up. My good. Can we also just talk about how PK Chris is definitely positioning himself, especially in these ledge trap situations, too? That's like the third side B. Remember, earlier on in this, I don't know if it was this game or last, but he jumped over the side B. He knew it was coming and just, like, avoided it. And that time around, he knew the side B was coming, and he was not being, whoa, you're dead? You're dead. What was that? That was silly. <laughs> I was a little silly. I was like, what's going on here? Oh my god. And missed attack too. Yeah, I mean, in that situation, funnily enough, I think he could have just, like, sent his P his thunder anywhere. Just, like, sent it off and then just made sure he teched when he got hit by the upbeat. Absolutely. But again, here we're seeing a little bit of a ledge trap situation, a little trap trap going on. So and even right now. They're 0.5% separated. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I don't know if he has a jump. Yeah, he's forced to up B right here, going for those down tilt two frames. He's only gotten them once so far this game, but when Ness is rocketing towards you, there's not you want to play it safe and just stay on stage. Absolutely. Yeah, look at but we're definitely seeing a little bit of the scrap situation going on, and again, this is dead even right now. This is the first time it's felt dead even in so long. And oh, this is really big, possibly not getting the up tilt follow up. Up tilt right now would be absolutely devastating for PK Chris. And avoiding them. Well, I don't know what that forward smash was. That might have been a missed input. Hopefully, that doesn't cost him too much right here. Forced to uh, be again to the ledge, and those down tilts just not finding it. This is so close that we've already seen that back throw. With rage, back throw would kill right now. Oh, back throw is such a threat. He's looking for it, staying a lot more grounded, but the landing hit of forward air, sending him off stage once more. So dangerous, throwing out these hitboxes, trying to find that final blow, and he's just respecting it, he oh. finds that up smash! Catching the shield drop, and that's going to be a 3-1 victory for PK Chris. Absolutely, and I definitely want to point out how Tilly was actually going about playing neutral right there. You saw so many times where, you know, PK Chris would go for these, um, I think it's the, the side B, the side B shenanigans. You know when you go for like the, the double jump side B and you end with no lag? We've been seeing that like right there. That's one of the situations. I think he goes for it again right here, shields it. But then again, Tilde was just trying to, you know, do something to actually punish it. And in the end, gets punished for actually, you know, using Well, I mean, the thing is, keep in mind, he dropped shield right there. Why did he drop shield? It's because he wasn't expecting the up smash specifically. It's such a good mix up. The fact that Ness has the ability to throw out a, a smash attack that also kind of faints as a tilt or a, or a weaker move. You know, because you see it, you see it connect, and you're like, oh, I got hit by something, and you just drop shield instinctively. But right there, it was just a great awareness, and I love this. That was funny. Look at that. That was a little funny. Yeah. Oh, uh, that and that was such a that was so crucial because if you remember at that point, PK Chris was really behind, and then finds that huge opening and. I think that it was very similar to game one, where mm -hmm. PK Chris was coming from behind, but he wasn't dying. He was surviving to these very high percents, and he was playing around the kill moves really effectively. We saw a lot of that, like, short hop forward air mm -hmm. from uh, from Tilde trying to, like, get mm -hmm. a drag down, and he was spacing just outside of range of that. I'm always just a hair's breadth away, mm -hmm. and it pays off so well for him. Ah, oh, you know. I, that that so, was a good game. Yeah, good games.